This is going to be the part three video of our elementary school fire alarm system replacement. This is going to be covering day three and day four where we are replacing the Edwards 6500 conventional fire alarm system in this mid 1970s elementary school. This video will be the continuation of the other two previous videos, which if you haven't seen them, I would recommend for the most information on the project. This project is replacing the fire alarm system and installing a notifier addressable full swap system. We will be replacing all of the bells and have replaced most of them as well as all the initiating devices such as pull stations and heat detectors and smoke detectors. Of course because the original system was a conventional system we have all conventional devices so to make this a full addressable swap we have to change all of those out and install isolators isolating the old conventional zones. Now as you will see in the video and have probably noticed in the other two parts, this school is very difficult as far as the coloring goes. You might as well be colorblind. And I don't mean that as a joke or sarcastically. You would actually be better off to be colorblind. Because we have seven or eight different colors used in this building with no regards to typical color coding or any consistency it makes for a very difficult project. Looks like I am the first one here today which means I am getting the best parking lot in the place. We have a technician here on site now going to create a program and we need to work on adding a relay module to control a larger relay for the doors. I'm starting today in this area of the school where we have these four classrooms. This is an addition. I'm going to do all the heat detectors in this area. So each classroom has one, two, is there one back here? No, two, and then there's one above the ceiling. Over here, fixed temp. This is the old fixed temp. Now surprisingly, though it being the newest section of the school, it has some of the worst coloring of conductors. So if you notice something looks like it's being installed wrong, it is actually done right. I have to meter every single device to ensure polarity and mistakes were still made. So you see I got blacks on positive, reds on negative, which should be wrong. And this section should have been straightened out, but nope, this is still the right way. So. Blacks are positive. Colors are completely screwed up. I thought we had it figured out when we switched it around, but apparently that's just the hallway that these rooms are still screwed up. So I had to go back and change this one as well as that one in the ceiling. There you can see what should be positive as it's red is actually negative. There is so many heat detectors here, bone three per classroom. I'm not going to show each one. There you go, once again, that is our negative, both reds. I'm telling you, this school is getting pretty frustrating. That every detector is basically reversed. And then when, just as you start getting used to it, start wiring them reversed, that's when you find that it's back normal again. It's like you can't win, you gotta really just check every single device. So you will notice that I was metering devices to ground and that is because they had 
the negative bonded back at the panel so I could meter the negative and where I had continuity ground I knew that was supposed to be my negative out in the field. So even though I went through all the trouble of checking for negative, which should have had everything right because I pulled off the pairs in the same configuration they came off the old detector, which was still a normally open zone, so there shouldn't have been any issues there. And as far as checking at the ground, that should have had everything sorted out. Okay, this room left and then that will be it for this little cluster of four classrooms and I go down around the hallway and do another section of four or five classrooms. However, that procedure of testing didn't end up working out in the end as we still had this section of the school littered with problems, which I honestly, I don't have an answer for what happened there. I, I truly don't know how it went so wrong. These classrooms here have four per room. We got one in the main area, one above the ceiling over there. For some reason, not on this side though. And then one in this back room and then one above in this back room. I don't know why there isn't one on that side, but there isn't. Kind of a pain in the ass spot, it's way over there, but now it makes sense why there's only one in the ceiling. I thought the ceiling space was shorter, like where the drywall is, but apparently it goes over top of the drywall. So it's actually is the whole ceiling. So that makes sense. As you would have noticed in the title and my intro, this video has day three and day four combined and that's because the actual video part of each day was cut short even though the some of the days we spent doing overtime because there was just so many problems I had to get sorted out it was very difficult to record as my priority was to work on this system which it took a lot of thinking to try and get this sorted out with how much colors were messed up this was a very, very, probably my most challenging install I've worked on so far, as far as the colors. Now this is the relay for the doors. It can do 10 amps at 120 volts. So we'll control that by the FRM relay. Put that up here somewhere. Oh. We're going to put this inside of here and then get a piece of aluminum or stainless steel, whatever, cut out, which will go to the side. And then this door will then go over top. I'm going to stop with the classrooms. I'm getting a little sick of them. Need a little bit of change of pace. I'm going to do the, the hallway, electrical room, and some other smokies and heaties. do have heats above in the hallway too. In theory, the technique of bonding the negatives should have worked to be able to reliably test which conductor was our negative as long as the pairs were pulled off and still kept in the same orientation. This is perfect. Oh yeah. All right, that was a complete pain in the ass, but it's up there. Just the SL. Coming back, right? So we got five wires total. Well, you got the, yeah, the right. hot neutral and then... The neutral and the switch the hot, the hot, hot is the gourmet yeah. pot. Remember, these are hot, though. Or no, we're dead. Should be enough. Here. Oh, uh, one second. You good? Oh, I twinged my back. Um, here. This is the most ridiculous spot ever came up with this shit. I don't trust that ladder not slide out on me. Oh, here, I can, I can leave that. 
You're good. I'm good there? Yeah, I'm gonna stand on it. Okay. Yeah, you got extra support. I'm just gonna drop this one down. Yeah, yeah. Red is negative. There's our ACM. This should be your LCD. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm gonna hook these up here so our, our ACM needs 24 volt plus ACS positive negative, and then this guy needs its uh, 24 volt and then four wires communication transmit receive okay so power for the one jumper it over ACS for for the ACM and then transmit receive for the LCD 280 which is coming off its own eight conductor and then communication for ACS and then power 24 volt yeah it should be b positive b negative b positive should be the piezo will be disabled on this guy only going to use this one so at this end of my enunciator my red black are going to be 24 volts non-resettable for both blue and brown are going to be acs positive negative and then brew brown red black will be my terminal communications. So my terminal transmit receive and my ACS, that's all my communications and then my non resettable power over there. Hey there guys, today is going to be day four of the fire alarm system replacement at the elementary school. Going to start where I left off yesterday, probably working the enunciator a little bit, but things could change. So then at this end here, got to tie in our enunciator. This is a time lapse here of me working on the enunciator. I know it's not the greatest camera angle to show. I didn't have a great place to put the phone, but it's pretty simple. We need two wires of non resettable power to power both enunciator components, and then we need another two wires for ACS communication, and then we need another four conductors to run the terminal communication to the LCD 280 that needs four wires communication for transmit and receive okay 24 volts acs positive negative and then transmit receive for the lcd 280 that should have this end all good all ready for an unseater I'm now installing the battery cables, which I don't finish installing the batteries yet as that is done at a later date where I then have to crimp the jumper together between the two batteries. Sunny. I want to get this on video. City power. 
There you go. Uh oh, we got one. So, tripped. that's a lot of tripped isolators. Those are all tripped? Yep. Shorts. Those are all what? dead shorts. So we have to find the short on everything. So basically split the circuit up, see if the problem's before or after, and track it down from there. So this is gonna be a lot of work. We think we found one in the gym already, that the gym is a problem area, but yeah, it's gonna take a lot of work. So they are getting 13, so you kinda have to pop the heads down and check them because you will be fine with the head down, but then when you put the head up, your reverse polarity could take out the isolator, so. A little bit time consuming, but you can narrow it down if you figure out what's going on. And that should light up. Yeah. We've pretty much taken everything back apart. We are troubleshooting this the most efficient way possible, but the school is not an easy one. The colors, as you've seen, are all over the place. So taking every head down and then checking polarity taking the positive off, making sure we have positive coming in. And then obviously, then we know it's our output somewhere down the line that's shorting it out. So we've got two tripped isolated branches of the SLC still. These are the gym pull stations in MPSSA. So hitting it with something won't pull it so easy. Mm. Jimple. So I just I just shorted that one out here, Peter, because we thought this was on with that zone. We're like we're getting power, <coughs> we're getting power here, but not there. Right. So I was like, why don't I short this just to make sure that that is this is zone two. So not even zone three. It's from this that zone that goes way so into the so library. So the fire doors are actually. Well, they got that. Right? They got it screwed up in two different ways. They should have another set of fire doors there if this is on a different zone. Like, it's really messed up. I can't even begin to video this. We spent all day looking for stuff. So with each device, we have to check it. Polarity. Otherwise, it'll short out the SLC. There we go. Correct. Another guy has something open. This has been a long day. Closed now? Okay. Blinking red, good, good. This one I just had to switch. You guys got something open? That one's backwards, gotta switch it.
That side's right. Seems to be right polarity on this side of the hallway. Good. Got the new pull stations. We are having a device coming up as a dual address. So we've got to try and find this dual address because the one that was coming up as a dual address, we checked it and it's set as the right one. So somewhere there's something else. So we're going to run an auto program, see if we find anything. I think we're going to change this one to 113 as our next available spot. Going to set that one to 113 in the staff room here. This one's open. Won't it alarm if I open it? I, th I, th I thought it might. How is it open if it works? Maybe one of the wires came off and I pushed it back in. I've just replaced that pull station because we had an open on this one. A little resistor got broken off. Problem is how tight it fits in this box here. That's why the resistor gets broken off. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all good. Okay, yeah, that's both those disabled. Yep. Yeah. Alarm, south classrooms, pull station. Can I silence and reset, or do you gotta reset that pull? I'll reset it and then you can take off. I can acknowledge that, right? Yeah. So all the pulls can go back on too, right? You can hit uh, acknowledge again. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, let me take them off now. So I can do a drill. How long do you want that for? Definitely loud where I'm standing. I got one right behind me. I think it's too loud. We probably need to turn them down. Do you have a BD meter? Yeah. Okay, we should you got to bring your BD meter tomorrow next. That is now going, not verified, but going in trouble free after a very long day of troubleshooting. Well, that was a difficult couple days of working on this system. I was thinking this system would be an easier one because of the building's age especially the additions not being too old but that couldn't have been further from the truth with how messed up the coloring of conductors were in this building made for an extremely difficult install and very difficult to troubleshoot everything especially before we had a powered up slc loop so i apologize for the lack of filming and the poor explanation of the situation my excuse for that is that it's quite challenging to film and explain when you're trying to figure out yourself the situation. It's one thing to make a video of something that you absolutely understand what you're doing and it is a total different thing when you're trying to figure out what is going on and try and explain it to an audience in a way that you're not going to get hate on later for not explaining it in a certain way or being wrong about something and then never hearing the end of it. Anyways, with all that said, I hope you guys did still get some entertainment out of this video, even if it wasn't the best situation with how this system was going in this video. But anyways, that's going to be it for this one. So if you did enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you do have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down in the comment section. And if you do enjoy my channel, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you are interested, I do have an Instagram account at Pickle700 for bonus content, content posted earlier than you see it on the YouTube channel, that sort of thing. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for watching.